Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 17. In this tutorial we are going to create the ability for our character to move side to side whenever we press some buttons on the screen. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. Um, since the last tutorial, I have been playing around a little bit with the uh, materials and I don't think I'm entirely convinced about how they look here, especially considering how our character looks. So I want to spend just a moment or two uh, working on those materials. Now, what I'd like to do is change the material type. So if we select the materials and I want to change the shader to something a little better, I want to go to particles and let's go... Uh, let's go unlit and see how that looks. I kind of feel that that looks a little bit better than the kind of effect it was previously. And I guess if you want to, you can play around with some of the colors and you know, do what you want to. I suppose you could make it completely <laughs> really red for, for whatever reason. Um, change the emission if you wanted to. Again, I think it's something for you to work with. Uh, but I kind of like how this looks a, a little bit better, to be honest. Um, just overall, I just think it looks a little better. Because uh, if we press play now and have a look, it seems to kind of fit in a little bit more with the style we're going for. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with those materials. Again, it's up to you whether you want to do that. It's your game after all. So how do we have the ability to move our character from side to side? So I want to have two effective buttons on the screen to either move left or right. So what we'll do is we'll create the script first and then we'll create the buttons on the screen. So in general, let's right click, create C sharp script. And obviously same with all scripts. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it absolutely anything, but let's call it something relevant. Um, char move L R. So the reason LR is just short for left and right, and obviously we can't have it the same as this script right here. So you can't have two scripts the same. So let's open that up in Visual Studio and let's start coding this. There's not gonna to be too much to do. Um, there's gonna be some if statements and else statements to basically detect whereabouts we are, especially for the camera. So the way we're going to do this is we're gonna declare four variables. We're gonna declare the runner, the camera, the X position and the Z position. So let's start with public game object. And the first one is going to be the character. You can call it the character if you want to. I'm just going to call it the runner because I suppose this is an endless runner. So having it named as the runner makes sense. Uh, next one, public game object. Um, I'm just put main cam semicolon. The next one is going to be an integer and I'll explain why this is an integer and the next one after that is a float. So public int and this will be the x pos. So just literally x pos. And then the next one public float and this will be the z or z position. So z pos. Now the reason x is an integer and z is a float is because the z is going to be a decimal number no matter what because it's moving constantly through the screen whereas the x position is either going to be a zero a negative one or a positive one it'll either be one of those three so that is fine as an integer so what we need to do is we need to constantly monitor <clears throat> the z position of the character or the runner in this case so in void update I shouldn't have really deleted it before I get, but I guess it doesn't really matter so in void update we just need to put z pos is equal to the runner dot game object dot transform dot position dot z semicolon so that will assign whatever the number is in there to our z pos every single frame so for example our player object is going to be what we assign to that it will update this constantly so if i press play now we'll see this z position constantly update 
So that number will be passed to this variable when we're done with the script. And that's going to be handy for when we change wherever we are on this level. So we're going to be doing this via two separate buttons, the move right button and a move left button. So let's start with move right. So public void move right, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And we are basically going to put um, an if statement here because we can only go so far right and only go so far left. So we need to detect if the X position is at the edge. So for example, if we move our player object to here, that's as far right as it can go, in which case it is one. So if, and in brackets, x pos equals one, then we just say x pos is still equals to one. However, below the if statement, we can then type the word else with an if statement. And what this is saying is if it's equal to one, keep it as one. If it's not, do the following. So if it's not equal to one, it means that we are either here in the center or here on the left. So we should add one to that X position. So X pos plus equals one semicolon. So it can now detect whether we are here, here or here. That's important. It can also detect whether we are in uh, whereabouts we are on the Z axis. Again, that's also important. So we have those two figures now set in stone. That means that we can change whereabouts the runner is on the level. So we can say the runner dot game object dot transform dot position equals new vector three and we use new vector three simply because it is a 3d environment so we need need to declare the x position the y position and the z position now so the you'll notice that we haven't dealt with the y position the reason for that is that's always going to be static at one that is never going to change simply because of how we've designed this so let me just bring our character back to the middle so that's never ever ever going to change so we can say at this point x pos as the x position, 1 as the y position, because like I say that'll never change, and z pos as the z position. And that essentially works just fine. So it means that whenever we press the right button, we're going to move right until we can't move right anymore. So that means we need to do the inverse of that. So I'm going to copy that method, paste it below. And then I am going to say here, move left. And you probably guessed it. We now need to determine if the X position when we move left is negative one. And if it is, then keep it as negative one. And if it isn't, then we deduct one from it. So if we're all the way on the right, it will move to zero and then move to negative one. And essentially it is the same here. So the, literally the exact same code because we're still moving it to that position. So I want to save that script. There is going to be a little bit more that we'll add to that. You may not want to add a little bit more to it. I'll explain just uh, in a moment or rather a little later on in this tutorial. So now what we need to do is let's move our character move left and right to global scripts. And then we just need to declare those variables. There is a missing script there. I think it was through my testing. Doesn't matter. So anyway, we have character move left, right, the runner, main cam. So the runner is going to be the player object and the camera is going to be the main camera. So now what we need to do is we need to set up two buttons. Now we've dealt with buttons before, but these are going to be completely see-through. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to button. I'm going to have this button um, pretty much all the way up the screen at least to somewhere around in the middle. So the button itself, what I want to do is normal color. I want to have completely off. And let's actually remove the text from it as well. So let's get rid of the word button there. So if I press play now, 
We know that there's a button there in the bottom corner and we can kind of hover over it and still see. So what that means is that basically we can use that now to attach a script, but I want to make it bigger than what it is. So let's double click that button so we can see it on our canvas. I'm going to extend it to the center and then extend it all the way up to, let's say about there for now. And let's call this, so rename to left button. And then I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate and move it to the other side. And that's going to be right button. So now let's set those uh, functions in place. So let's go to left button, click on plus down here. Let's attach global scripts, click on no function, and then char move LR and we're moving left. So move left. Once again, same with the right button. Let's drag the global scripts onto there. No function, character move left, right, and we're moving right. So let's press play and give this a quick try. So you can see that the buttons, the, the, it is working, just the buttons are kind of preventing how it looks. So let's take a quick look at this. So let's select both buttons and let's have the highlighted color as just one on the alpha. Let's press play and see how that looks. So you can see nothing at all. However, when we click it, we can still see that. So once again, let's go on pressed color. Let's set that as one as well. Let's press play. And you can see there, selected color. So we just need to change selected color. Let's try one as well. Again, I guess it really is up to you how you do this. So you can see, that doesn't look too bad now. That's working. So right, and we can't go right anymore. But it is resetting. It is resetting. So we need to kind of establish why that is resetting. I'm just going to turn this music down just a little bit. Okay. So why is it resetting? Let's go on global scripts and take a look. So whenever we do that, it is bringing our character back to the start. So if we select um, player object, we can see right here. It just brings it back to the start. Basically because it's spelt wrong there. So I'm going to save that. Now this is one of them classic moments where a genuine error like that is basically causing a complete breakdown of everything. And that's not an error that you would generally see in your console. Something simple like that could completely break your entire game. And all I was missing was the letter P there. So now if we press play, we should see the desired effect. So you can see we can't go any more to the right. Can't go any more to the left. Now you'll notice that the camera is moving along with our character. So it's up to you whether you want to have that. Uh, but if you don't want to have that, there is a way of getting around it quite easily. And it's just one extra line of code in each of those methods. And the way you do it is you basically inverse what's happening on the X position on the local position. Because if you try changing the camera position like we have done here, it's not going to work the same way. You have to change the local position. Reason being is because the camera is inside another object. So that means that we could put the, not the runner, we want to put main cam dot game object dot transform dot local position and it's a lowercase l and an uppercase p so we're only dealing with the internal position of the camera we'll make that equal to a new vector 3 and it's going to be pretty much what the settings already are apart from the x-axis so if we look at the camera we need to keep it as 4.5 and negative 0.5, but we do need to change the X position. So if we move right, it means that we have to inverse what we're doing there. So X 
pos um, multiplied by negative one. We'll take whatever the value of x pos is and make it a negative or the inverse of what it currently is. So if we're all the way to the right, it means this number will become a negative. If it's all the way to the left, it means it will become a positive. If it's zero, it means it's zero, it stays the same. So next on the y is 4.5f, and then on the z is negative 0.5f. And then we can use that exact same line of code in the move left. So that can be saved. Head back into Unity. And let's press play. And hopefully we should be able to see now the camera remains in the same position. So we can move quite freely. So already you can see how this game is going to function. Quite difficult. But again, it's the challenge. I'm quite enjoying this. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to add in the ability to uh, create a score. So we're going to increase our score every time we go past one of those uh, randomly generated ledges. So yeah, that's going to be coming up. And after that, we'll deal with um, basically crashing and ending the game. So until the next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.